Thanks for tuning in today to Front Porch Conversations here at Advent Christian Village. We are at the Harmony Center this morning on a nice, bright, sunny day. Not too warm, but better than we've had for the last few days. I'd like to introduce you to our guests today, Beth Bauer and Andy Durrance. Thank you so much for joining us. We're happy to be here. And we're going to get to know, people are going to get to know you better. You're fairly new here at the Village. Yes. So tell us about when you arrived and where you lived. We bought our house in May. We closed on the house in Riverwoods in May. Spent two nights there because we needed to move in all the things that we had put in storage. We moved ourselves gradually over Mm -hmm. because we were moving from just three hours west of here. And um, we're seasonal and we were late. We were a month late getting to our place in North Carolina. So we took off and were there for five months. So we've only been here a little more than three months, even though we've been members Mm -hmm. for a good nine months or so. And um, where is your place that you go seasonally? It is in Balsam, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. That's between Waynesville and Silva. It's a beautiful area. It is. It has a nice elevation. It's cooler in the summer. We can garden there much more easily than we can in Florida. Andy's an avid gardener. Well, we're going to hear more about that, Andy, in just a few minutes. Uh, Where were you each born? Oh, I can say I'm a native Floridian. I was born in Tampa, and I lived there for three months. (laughs) (laughs) And then I was raised in Greenville, Mississippi. I was born in southwest Georgia, a little town, Cuthbert, on US 27. There's a college there, right? Yep, Andrew College. Mm -hmm. For girls originally. A friend of mine went, went there. That's how I know about it. It's a Methodist uh-huh. college, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, what are some of the fond memories growing up that you have? Oh, mine would, mine would involve horses. I, I think my first word out of childhood was horse. And no one else in my family was the least bit interested in horses. And I finally was gifted one from a family friend. They felt sorry for me. (laughs) And uh, that horse and I went everywhere. And I had friends, of course, on their horses. And we rode all over town, all over the Mississippi River levee that's there in Greenville. And uh, just had complete and total freedom. It was wonderful. And what about you, Andy? I guess mine would be growing up on a farm. We... We were there 10, 10 or 11 years before we moved to town, but that that has a lot of fond memories. So was your family actively involved in farming? Yes, Dad, Dad was a peanut farmer. That's a pretty popular thing to grow in that area. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And then um, you both attended high school yep. in those areas. And after high school, what? Well, I think I left two weeks after graduation and started summer school at UT Knoxville and took my horse with me. Uh, My aunt and uncle had a horse farm there that I had the opportunity to visit growing Mm -hmm. up. And uh, it just seemed like a logical thing to do. It was a good therapeutic thing to have while I was in college to be able to go out to the farm, take a break. Mm-hmm. visit with my horse it, and it turned out to be a really good idea and when I graduated she was sold to a, a couple who wanted her for their grandchild and she was certainly well broken and mm-hmm. a great horse for them to have for the grandchild. Have you had a horse since? I, hmm. I've i had a horse, I don't have one now but for at least half of my life I've owned mm-hmm. a horse or horses but uh, we decided at one time to move on from the horse operation. It it became tedious. I was traveling for work and Andy was having to muck stalls and it just didn't seem practical anymore. So he married you for better or worse, but not mucking stalls. (laughs) It was love me, love my horse. (laughs) And then yes, I decided this probably wasn't a good uh, setup for him. (laughs) Beth, where did, uh, after college, where did, what was your career and where did it lead you? I grew up in a heavily farmed area of Mississippi. That's the Mississippi Delta where Mm -hmm. cotton and soybeans were king. And my father was in the agricultural chemical business. 
So I grew up around all of the different companies that offer products mm -hmm. to the farming industry and I decided late in my college career that I wanted to be in the agricultural business and I, I managed to take my degree and, and frame it with a senior thesis toward agriculture and at the time all of those companies were being required to hire women. Mm -hmm. So in the 70s when I graduated I was one of the first women in a, men, in a man's world in a traveling sales you know, company car, call on farmers kind of business. So it was, uh, it was interesting. That was a start for eight years, and I migrated into uh, computer systems, thankfully, and uh, then was focused on the very early stages of managed health care. Oh, uh -huh. I, I was selling software systems before anyone knew what HMO stood for. Mm -hmm and it was a great ground floor opportunity that I then turned into a, a full career. Andy, what about you after high school? What did you? I spent four years in the Navy, and uh, after that I spent six years at the University of Georgia, and then uh, I went to work with uh, Georgia Power Company there in Athens for the next 25 years, and then they moved me to Atlanta for 10 years, and that's when I had to retire early. <laughs> <laughs> well, I spent two years in Athens at the, to get a degree at the university, yeah, yeah. so we have that in common. Yep. Um, and what, did, what was your specialty with Georgia Power? Uh, I, I had a degree in forestry from Georgia, and that's what I was hired as, was a forester. As, but I didn't really do typical forester work. We were u utility arborists. Okay. Uh, basically, we managed the tree trimming crews that keep the lines clear from trees. They were all con almost all contract crews, so we had uh, a lot of those to manage. And then from Atlanta, how did you get to Florida? We were coming down for vacations and we started off on St. George Island and moving around we went, wound up at the Indian Pass campground for a while and we went home through Port St. Joe. I can't tell that story. Oh, well, <laughs> you can't tell it well, as well as I can. It was a, a trip right before Christmas and we were coming through Port St. Joe for the first time because we had stayed at that Indian Pass campground. And I realized that I had forgotten to send a postcard, I mean a Christmas card, to someone. And I said, stop, stop at the post office and let me um, send this Christmas card. And we'd already, we'd been driving for 20 minutes or so to, to get mm -hmm. to that point. And, and it was, early, you know, we had that two or three cups of coffee. And um, so I'm in the post office and I'm, you know, thinking I kind of need to powder my nose. And um, I asked the gentleman that's on the other side of the counter, knowing the answer would be no, mm -hmm. do you have a ladies room that I could use, a public restroom? And, and he said, well, no ma'am, but follow me. And he unlocked the counter, escorted me through the back door, unlocked that door to take me to the, where they say, sort the mail, waited for me and then escorted me back. And when I went back to the truck, I said to Andy, if the people in this t town, in the post office, are this nice three days before Christmas, I want to live here. <laughs> that was when postal was a verb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's a great um, advertisement for their community. As well. Absolutely, okay. and it turned out to be so true. And how long were you in Port St. Joe? 16 years. 16. And were you, um, you have camped a lot, so tell us where you got your interest in camping and your tra how much traveling you did with that. It started out with trail riding the horses. We did long distance trail riding and there are clubs mm -hmm. that ha host trail rides all over the southeast. It's, you know, so, as far as you mm -hmm. want to drive, you can take your horse and go somewhere and camp and ride. And uh, we started with a slide-in camper on the back of the pickup truck so we could pull the horse trailer. And it, it went from there. We, we, we liked the camping aspect of it. And as Andy mentioned, 
we started out vacationing with the camper, you know, going to the beach, and uh, we still like to go in the van. Now, when I retired from my job, which involved a lot of airplanes and hotels, when I retired, I said the last thing I want to do is stay in a hotel and get on an airplane. So RVing is the perfect alternative for me. <laughs> and so where have you been all over the country or more? No, I, <laughs> I, uh, I don't care much for traveling long distances anymore. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we pretty much limit it to between here and North Carolina and some running around when we're in each place. We'll take uh, the van to a campground in the Smoky Mountains, spend a few nights. Uh, we'll take the van. Now we're going over back to Port St. Joe. We did that the first week of December. Mm -hmm. We had a good reason to go back that week. And now he has a doctor's appointment in Panama City that he decided to keep. A, a one-year follow-up mm -hmm. with a, a vascular surgeon sort of thing and so we said okay well we'll just go and spend another 10 days in Port St. Joe and uh, uh, that gives us an opportunity to attend our church there the Methodist Church in Port St. Joe and visit with our church friends for two Sundays uh -huh. and uh, and then get his doctor's appointment in and then we'll, we'll come back and park the van in the garage because that was the only house in Riverwoods that had a garage, enough garage. <laughs> large enough to hold the van. <laughs> that sort of expedited our decision to go ahead and buy a house and move here when we were looking for a retirement community. What may, how did you come to find out about Advent Christian Village? When uh, we were in Port St. Joe, we, we have a couple, had a couple across the street from us in their mid 80s or so who started developing mobility issues. Um, I would walk their dog for them because they just couldn't, they couldn't walk the dog anymore. And we were spending more and more time with them. And she started to talk about, well, they moved there from Wisconsin and she started to talk about this continuing care retirement facility where they used to volunteer. And so her mindset was shoulda, woulda, coulda. Mm -hmm. You know, if only we had a place like that, then I'd feel more comfortable about the fact that our health is failing and I don't know what we're going to do. And, it, and, I, and I'm realizing that in Port St. Joe, there's just this tiny little nursing home that doesn't offer much at all. Mm -hmm. And I've visited people there and I'm, now I'm realizing I don't want to be there. Um, Andy's 12 years older than I am and, um, it, you know, it's going to happen someday. And it look, it's happening to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. So I said to Carol, um, I'll look around for you. There are continuing care facilities in Florida and you won't have to move back to Wisconsin. It's too cold there. Mm -hmm. And I started looking on her behalf and uh, the wife of our pastor at the Methodist Church in Port St. Joe, when I mentioned it to her, said, oh, you should check out Advent Christian Village. My mother lives there. And she's lived there for eight years. And I said, well, where is it? And she said, it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I said, well, we like the middle of nowhere. We'll go there and check it out. And we did. And of course, I had already been calling around in Tallahassee and Panama City. I had a little checklist of what I thought they would like because they're both master gardeners. And I wanted to be sure there was a community garden and just things like that. And But they were the same things that we were looking, mm -hmm. that we would look for. And we came and sat with Karen Thomas, and she knew that we were sort of looking with them in mind and with us in mind, and she said, well, what's your time frame? And I looked at Andy and I said to Karen, probably a year, and we bought our house three weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not the first people that we've had a front porch conversation with that got here because they were helping somebody else find a place oh, to sure. live. Now, what about the, cup, the your neighbors? They are approved. They have applied. Uh, they applied sight unseen. Uh, the trip that we made to Port St. Joe the first week of December was designed so that we could drive them in their van over here. So mm -hmm. we went all the way to Port St. Joe, loaded up in their van early one morning, drove them over here for their first tour. 
and they've since returned between Christmas and New Year's. Their daughter, who was very reluctant, she thought this is just far too remote. It wasn't what she had in mind, mm -hmm. but her mother finally convinced her that what you want is not what we want. And now the daughter brought them back between Christmas and New Year's, and they had another full tour, look around, and now they're going through the steps to uh, make the move, uh, deciding what they can bring. They're gonna, they've chosen an apartment in Smith Riverview. They're excited <laughs> about coming, but understandably Carol's very um, anxious about it. I talk to her every few days to talk her, we'd say, I'm going to talk her off the cliff, <laughs> <laughs> but I think she's coming around. She's doing fine, and there are neighbors there. Uh, we're going back that last week of February to help with anything we can do, and so we'll, we'll get them here. Great. And they're exci very excited about it. Well, you've alluded to gardening. Tell us about your interest in gardening and how that started and what you are doing now and will be doing when you go back to North Carolina? Well, when we talked about camping in the van, um, probably the most significant camping that we've done with that is to go up to North Carolina. We spent one summer in Port St. Joe after we bought our house and moved down there full time from Atlanta that was just far too hot. <laughs> and so I decided, and we both did, that we needed to go somewhere in August at least. So for a good six or seven years, we would go spend 10 days in a campground that we had found uh, in Balsam, North Carolina. And while there, going to the farmer's market, I found dahlias. There was a vendor there, a, a grower, who uh, would have just 30 or 40 or 50 aluminum buckets full of these long stem dahlias. And so every time we would be up there in our camper, I'd get an arrangement, and then I said, uh, one, t one time we were sitting there by the camper, by the babbling brook that ran through the campground, and said, you know what, 10 days isn't long enough. We need to stay longer. And I said, yes, and I want to grow dahlias. <laughs> <laughs> and we do, it's a ministry for me. Uh, I take arrangements from late August all the way through the time that we're there, like till mid-October, I take arrangements to shut-ins which, of course, that was before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, after COVID hit, I, it was friends and family that got the arrangements, or we'd, I'd invite someone to come and, and walk through the, the dahlia patch, I call it, and, and then send them home with an arrangement. And unfortunately, they don't grow here, do they? It's too hot at night. They prefer cool evenings, and um, they thrive up there, mm -hmm. and it's so much fun. So, Andy, is your interest in, in gardening from childhood, or have you had gardens all along? Yeah, it's all of my life. Uh, up there, is, uh, we grow green beans is the major thing, because we can around 50 quarts every summer, and I split them up with the kids, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, them all through the winter. Uh, we grow squash and okra and gave up on corn because of the raccoons and the bears. <laughs> Anything that attracts a bear, you try to stay away from. That's right, because you want him to stay away from your garden <laughs> and you right. too. <laughs> yeah. um, and you have a garden here at the village. Yes. What's what's planted right now? It's winter, winter crops, uh, collards and broccoli and cauliflower and... Uh, Right now we have have just planted some sugar snap peas and they're coming up. So. Um, I know that you also enjoy pickleball and that was something that was on your checklist of finding. Right? Yes, yes, I yep. scoured the Advent Christian Village website looking for indications of pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, in a couple of words, tell our viewers who may not know what pickleball is about pickleball? Yes, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in the country. And it is um, a, a racket and net sport. If you can envision life-size ping pong, <laughs> <laughs> full court ping pong, that would be an adequate description. It's like a cross between ping pong, tennis, and badminton. Um, it's physical. The mobility is, is important. It's also addictive. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And it's something you both enjoy, right? 
Yes. When um, you were alluding to your church in um, Port St. Joe, did you both grow up in church? Was that a part of your life growing up? Until I left home, it was. And what brought you back to church? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and similarly, Plus a, a really good church in, in Port St. Joe that we started attending. And we just loved everybody there. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Beth? I was raised Methodist, and um, we went to church frequently, Sunday school, all of that. But when I left home and went to college, I, you know, I, I, I still regret that I didn't get involved with the Wesley group, um, whomever that might have been on the college campus, I, I was kind of rebellious about the subject. And because I was, what was going on in that time frame in Mississippi put me into a, a private school because I was going to be bused um, miles away from home to a county school. And I, I went to a, Christ, a small Christian school that actually didn't foster my faith, I'm sad to say. And it, but, it, but it was always there. God was always mm -hmm. calling me. And when certain points in my life, I'd go looking for a church. And then it, I was just too busy. You know, you're, you're working all week. And then Sunday's the good day to sleep in and that sort of thing. But when we moved to Port St. Joe, um, our neighbors said, grabbed us, took us to the Methodist church, and we fell in love. And and both of us went to the walk to Emmaus, and it, it, it was a life changer. Well, I've been on a similar weekend in the Episcopal Church, and yes, mm -hmm. that's one of the pivotal points in my life, in mm -hmm. my faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and for our viewers who aren't familiar, it is a, a short weekend course yes. in Christianity is what it stands for. Mm -hmm. Yes, they bring a lot of people to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other um, interests and hobbies you have? Well, I, I think I think you've got a few to keep you busy, but yeah, well, right now what's keeping us busy is getting settled in the house and trying to get it exactly like we want it to be. And and we've only been at it for three months, so that's that's occupied a good a bit of attention. But in the past, I've done some pottery on the wheel, throwing on the wheel, which I I dearly love doing, and I'm. I'm I, I know it was something that was available here in the past. And, and could be, but for a lack of teacher. Exactly, but I'm not that skilled. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about it, and I said, oh, I don't think I could do that. Um, I, may, I may look into the woodworking. I brought a, a toy that I've had for many, many years that is made of wood. It's something that anyone can do, any age. It requires a little bit of finger dexterity. It involves... A little hoop uh, made of wood and a ball on a string and a little plastic spoon and you just elevate you know you, you sort of send that ball up in the air with and anyway I'm thinking I might try to make one of those I, I was thinking I would take it over to the woodworking shop and see if anybody wanted to make them and now the past few days after reading more about how they do I haven't visited yet but reading more about what they do I'm thinking well I'll just take it over there maybe I'll make it myself and make multiples of them mm -hmm. for, for giveaways. Or for the toy drive that we do. For, or for the for, toy drive, yeah, or, or for shut-ins, mm -hmm. or you know, just something to, to be fun to, to do. Andy, anything new that you're planning? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a definite. I, uh, <laughs> I have hunted and fished all of my life. Uh, up until a few years ago, and it just kind of went away. Uh, lost the, lost the. Uh, well, all the old guys that I used to run around with are mostly gone or disabled, as as I am getting to be. So, it's better probably for me not be on the river in a boat anymore. <laughs> so, I don't really have anything except. The pickleball and the garden and whatever she wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a group of hikers that uh, keep us pretty busy in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we brought our packs with us when we came to Florida. 
this time, and I thought maybe we would spend more time in the woods, and I think we will. Um, I think we'll find a hike. There's so many springs to explore and trails and, mm -hmm. and the water. I, I probably will get on the water in a kayak or a canoe. <laughs> and I think he'll, if his back will let him, he'll, he'll come and do that too. But right now he's having some back pain. So uh, we're going to get that addressed with some medical attention. And hopefully he'll be back wanting to walk and, and uh, boat. Beth, I know Andy said that he's not interested in traveling the world at this point, but what, what are your travel goals and plans? Some of, some of my goals I've met, and I'm thrilled to say that about three years ago I had the opportunity to go on a trip to the Holy Lands with a tour group, and the group com was comprised of our friends, our church mm -hmm. friends from Port St. Joe Methodist Church. We had enough of us going that we filled a bus all of our own, and it was it was a wonderful trip. And as it turns out, our pastor and his wife have become host and hostesses for this tour group. It's the Educational Opportunities, the Methodist-based mm -hmm. touring group. We have a trip planned uh, this year to Oberammergau, and as you know, that is um, that passion play is put on. In Austria, I believe it is um, Austria, Germany, Germany, Germany um, every only every ten years, and it has been canceled only three times: World War One, World War Two, and for COVID. It was rescheduled for this year, and I think you're going as well. I'm planning to go as well. Yes, yes. so that's, a different time with a different group. Yep. Yeah, yes. So that group is scheduled to go in September, and and my problem is that's prime dahlia season. <laughs> so I'll have to get a babysitter for the flowers. Well, I bet you'll find somebody who will probably want a new ministry themselves with values after that. I, it's pretty likely. Thank you all so much, and welcome to the village, and um, keep up the good work and getting to know your neighbors, and I think you're learning about the community outside of the village as well. That's yes. a part of relocating. Yes, know. indeed. We love Live Oak. It's, it's a wonderful place with beautiful people. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for tuning in and come back again and see another Front Porch Conversation.